All right, welcome back to the lift pump test series. Today we are testing the fast titanium series, 125 gallon per hour pump. This guy is rated at 125 gallons per hour at 45 PSI per fastest website. They rate this to support up to 700 horsepower. So anywhere from stock to 700 horsepower, this is a pump for you. And so we just want to see what's it going to do. Uh, again, we have the same parameters as last time. We're, we're testing uh, the flow rate. We're testing pressure. We're testing pressure drop across the fast filter, see if it's a good filter. And we're going to see how many, if we think it'll support the power they advertise. We're going to power it with one of my bench power supplies. It's a switch mode power supply that's got an adjustable output between 0 and 30 volts and 0 and 20 amps DC. Um, Basically what we're going to do is put it in constant voltage mode at 14.2 uh, volts and we're going to run it through its paces there. And then Todd also wanted to see what it would do at 16 volts like on a race truck with a lithium battery. You know my race truck I run two 16 volt systems. A lot of guys do this. You know, more power for the pumps, things run faster or harder. So let's see in a race truck type application if you have one of these what kind of flow you see a 16 volt system. It's fun to do. And since we can do it, we're going to. So on this fast pump, there's four, four kind of main bullet points they point out on the website. First, as they say, this thing is quiet. They call it their whisper technology. This is supposed to be a very quiet fuel pump. I can tell you from an old pumps, like you know, 10 years ago, they were extremely loud. So I'm excited to see how quiet this is. The next thing they talk about is they have some machining techniques where they radius cut all their stuff. So all the passages in this fuel block are supposed to be optimized for, for perfecting flow. So it's supposed to flow real well. They also have this thing called mass flow return. What is that, Tony? So basically what their mass flow return is, is there's a regulator or it's really a relief valve inside uh, the block here on top of this filter. And basically what they're doing is um, when, you know, this pump is preset at 45 to 47 PSI as per the website. Basically when system pressure, when, when the discharge pressure climbs above that, it cracks open a relief valve here that sends fuel from that sends fuel back to the tank. And the last thing they point out is the easy install. They say you don't have to weld or nothing, just bolt this thing on. So we bolted it on here, not accurate to so we can do your truck, but they say it's an easy install. So we've got everything on this load ready to go. Uh, let's start the test. Let's see what this pump can do. It's gonna start out at about 20 PSI. That's as low as we can go with this regulator here. So let's see what kind of flow we can get at about 20 PSI. Then we're gonna bump it up to 45 PSI, which is what they rate this pump at in their literature. So let's see what it does at 45 PSI. Then we're gonna just crank it up. If I wanna go hot rod and I wanna pick up some power, let's see what it does at 60 or 65 PSI. I don't know how high this thing can go. We're gonna find out. All right, so the first test we're gonna do is 20 PSI at 14.2 uh, volts. Now, while we can't drive this pump with our test bench, I did set the test bench up to give us a false, you know, RPM signal so we can still calculate supported injection rate. So right now it's set for idle and you can see that this 118 gallons an hour at 20 PSI um, would support about 3,300 cc's. Right. Uh, which would be a pretty torquey setup. Two 16 millimeter pumps. <laughs> Um, at 14.2 volts it's drawing 10 amps so 142 watts of total power there as we increase the speed however you can see that this injection rate drops so we started at 3300 at idle and now at 2000 rpm we're down to 1,200 cc's. So at 4,000 RPM, we're down to 625 cc's. At 5,000, we're looking at right at uh, 500 cc's. So what we'll do now is we'll turn the We'll readjust the regulator and set it to 40 PSI. 45. 45. So now we're up to 45 PSI and 
We're showing uh, 103 or 104 gallons per hour at 45 PSI. So that's supporting about 435 cc's of injection rate. So we'll drop this down to 4,000 RPM. Now we're back up to 550 cc's. And at 3,000 RPM, we're looking about 730. Increasing the pressure to 45 PSI from 20 did uh, cause the amperage to creep up to 12.1. So that's interesting to note. So we'll drop down to 2000 RPM just to see the cc's there. Yeah, so that gets us back up to 1100 cc's. 50. And there's just a trickle at 50.7. Yeah, there's some there's some flow there at 51. So 50 PSI is really where that relief valve cracks open. So, and you can see the flow is significantly dropped off down from our 103, 104 down to 97 gallons per hour. That's because flow coming through the pump is being diverted from the, from this output and into this output. Well, let's see, let's see what we have at 60. So at 60 PSI, we're down to 67 gallons per hour. So at 60 PSI, the current draw is 13.5 amps. All right, so now that we've completed that test, we're going to turn the voltage up to 16 volts to simulate an application on a race truck. Let's do it. Okay, so 16 volts. Noticeably louder, a lot higher speed, we can tell. Probably because of good flow. So yeah, 16 volts and 12.7 amps. So at 2000, we're running about 1300 cc's. At 4,000 RPM, we can get away with 650. And at 5,000 RPM, it's going to be 520. So if we take it up to 60, we're up to 14.1 amps. Flow is 87.5. Okay, so now we're back. We've done most of the testing, but we've now capped off the fuel polishing return line that cracks open at about 50 PSI. Because I don't know how much flow this thing's gonna give us at 60 PSI, and I know it's, it's, it's bleeding off a lot. So let's see what it can do when it's not bleeding off a bunch back to the tank. So now we're ready, about hooked up. Let's see what it's gonna do. So first one we're gonna do 14 volts, then we'll do 16 volts, so we'll do them both. All right, so going up to 60 pounds. So we're showing 96 gallons an hour at 60 PSI. So is that like 30 gallon per hour drop? Was it like 66 before? Yeah. So a pretty big drop on that. If you're going to high pressure, it's a pretty big drop. 30 gallons per hour, you lose back to your tank. So if you want to make high pressure with this pump, you ought to think about not hooking that piece up. And we're showing 13.8 amps. So at 2,000 RPM, that'll support about 1,000 cc's. At 4,000, that's 505 cc's. At 5,000 RPM, we're looking at 400. Team for the 16 volts and do the same two tests. All right, back at 114 gallons an hour now. At 60 PSI. At 60 PSI. Cool. That's almost 1,200 cc's, 1,190, 1,195. 3,000 RPM is going to be 805. 4,000 RPM is going to be 600. 5,000 RPM is going to be about 485.
6,000 RPM is going to be just barely, well, 405. So we picked up a full 100 cc's there. All right, so what are our thoughts on this pump? So we were not able to replicate 125 gallons an hour at 45 psi. Not on our stand. No. Um, well, we were with 16 volts. We got pretty close to 16 volts, actually. Yeah. But at 14 volts, your normal trucks, we're not quite able to get there. We were at 105. So about 105, so mm -hmm. about 20 gallons per hour short. Um, but still, with even with that, they advertise this up from moderate, from stock, up to 700 horsepower. And so from what we're seeing here, that's, that's believable. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I'd say that's the limit of this pump, but that's what they're saying. Um, just like we thought, the injection rate dropped because this thing never changes. You know, with the mechanical pump, flow would always increase. With this one, it never changes. Always the same gallons per hour, and how fast you took away from that well determined how much you, how much you could use, how much power you could make. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, one thing to remember though, if you're gonna use a pump like this, there's a couple different overflow valves you can put in your P-pump. One's like a, an orifice, a small orifice that constantly bleeds. That's a bad one to put. I would not put something that constantly bleeds because we saw how much it killed us here. So if you have one of those things that's just a certain size orifice that's bleeding the whole time, you're killing your flow. Get a standard overflow valve that actually is a spring pop-off that cuts flow until the pressure's reached and then it bleeds back. That's going to really optimize one of these pumps. Uh, get one of these guys, where same thing, where it stops flow until pressure's reached and then it goes through. So make sure if you're using this, don't have any bleeds. It just kills your power potential. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a fast 125. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I've wanted to know what these pumps full for a long time and uh, now we have a way to do it. So that's this one. Next one we're going to do a bigger pump and see what it flows. So make sure to subscribe so the next pump comes out you can see the test. And uh, thanks. We'll see you soon.